Hey guys, Dan here and welcome again to that paintball channel. For this episode, we come at long last to the topic of barrels. Now, no conversation about paintball accuracy can fail to discuss this. And indeed, it's such a large topic that it's going to take us about three episodes, I think, to fully unpack this. For this first installment, I'm going to take a look at some of the basics of barrels what they are, what they're not, what they do, what they don't do, and really try to dispel some of the hype, the myth, the superstition that has surrounded them for so long. So with that in mind, let's jump right in and get to what barrels are. Now, before we do this, it's very important to at least have the willingness to let go of some of the mystique and some of the aura that barrels have taken on. I think part of the reason that there's so much misunderstanding is because people tend to give them too much credit. We think too highly of them. This is not to say that they're not important. It's not to say that there aren't uh, reasons for going maybe with different barrels than what come stock in a, in a particular marker. But it is to say that we don't want to turn them into some kind of be-all, end-all with respect to this issue of accuracy because they simply aren't, as we'll see. So let's talk about what they are. So, drum roll, please. Ladies and gentlemen, barrels are, first and foremost, first and last, nothing more or less than glorified tubes that facilitate the straight-line acceleration of a paintball. And that's it. Added to that is the fact that barrels are the least important part of the equation when it comes to accuracy. Now, last time we already looked at the fact that, you know, the paintball is, that's the thing. Paintballs are what are accurate or not accurate. And as we've already seen, they're inherently inaccurate. So why do we look at the most important thing in direct conjunction with the least important thing? Well, it's partially because of the way in which they interact. You know, the paintball does in fact interact with the barrel, so it makes sense to talk about them together. But mainly the reason we're doing this is because of how they interact in people's minds. So it is very critically important up front, and I'll repeat this again and again and again, to get it clear that the barrel is absolutely at the bottom of the list in terms of important things to consider when you're thinking about paintball accuracy. It's the dead last thing. Nothing is less important than the barrel when it comes to accuracy. And again, that's that sounds very counterintuitive. You know, we we like to think of barrels as being very important. You know, it's very visible. It's, uh, you know, it's this large thing on the marker. It's the thing that accelerates the ball. It's the thing... You know, it's the last thing the ball sees, so it, there's a kind of logic that says, well, this has to be important to some degree. And yet, as we'll see, it's it's very unimportant. I mean, you do need a barrel, of course, but the the role that it plays is is something that is not nearly as exotic and glorious and sophisticated as as it's often hyped up to be. So that's what barrels are. Now let's take a look at uh, what barrels don't do. Now most importantly, it's, it's, it's imperative to get clear that barrels do not and cannot alter the basic physical properties or characteristics of the paintball. Now, we've already seen issue of accuracy turns on the physical characteristics of the paintball. It's limitation, size, shape, the way in which it sheds, vortices. Now think, the barrel is a tube. A tube cannot alter the physical properties of a paintball. They can't. The, the tube can't compensate for the limitations of the paintball, and those limitations are great. The tube cannot impart any magic sauce or mojo on the ball that will make it exceed its own physical limitations, not, not simply in terms of the ball, but in terms of the way in which that ball interacts with the, the atmosphere. The barrel can't 
change that. It can't do anything to that. So what that means is that barrels do not and cannot in any way, shape, or form make a paintball or by extension a marker more accurate. They simply can't. The paintball is already as accurate as it can possibly be. Now, ironically, the barrel can and does serve to degrade the performance level of the paintball. It can't add to it, but it can and does take away from it. And that's an important consideration that we'll be thinking about as we look uh, not only to this particular episode, but to episodes as they, they come up. And this is one of the most important aspects to consider. You know, we talked, I think, previously about, you know, people who will go out and they'll buy a really expensive marker. And then they'll shoot the cheapest paint they possibly can. And I think part of that has to do with that mindset that somehow my barrel can make the paint exceed its own limitations. It can't. You know, by by shooting the best paint that you can get, you're, you're giving yourself the best advantage. That barrel can never make the paint go above and beyond what it's capable of doing. Um, and, and this is uh, something that is, is uh, deeply ironic, as we'll see. So, now let's take a look at what, you know, what barrels do do. <laughs> I, I just said barrels. So, first, barrels do impart stress on the shell of the paintball. That's not a good thing. Second, paintball barrels do impart spin on a paintball. That's also not good. Uh, finally, barrels always, always, always degrade the inherent performance baseline of every single paintball that they shoot. So, what this means in a nutshell is that it is impossible for any barrel of any kind, any make, manufacturer, size, shape, material, um, you know, bore size, it doesn't matter. They can never ever contribute positively to the flight characteristics of a paintball. They cannot impart any beneficial effects to a paintball. Rather, because of their own inherent limitations, barrels can only to a greater or lesser degree impart additional negative effects on the negative characteristics that the paintball already possesses. Now, <laughs> I know that that sounds like a lot of bad news. You know, we're just sort of st stacking bad news on top of bad news but it's critically important to get our minds around that truth so that we can then, in coming to grips with that truth, figure out ways to work around it and, you know, move on with the real business of accuracy. Now, with all that in mind, it stands to reason that what the ideal barrel is going to look like is going to be one that is essentially, from the point of view of the paintball, invisible. We're going to want a barrel that will help facilitate that straight line acceleration in the most invisible way possible. So that means it's going to have a minimum of friction. In order to impart a minimum of deformation and degradation of the shell, as well as a minimum, if not a complete elimination of spin when that, when that ball uh, leaves the barrel. So that's the ideal, you know, good luck with that. You know, that's something that uh, we can be thinking about, that the ultimate objective is to have the most invisible barrel possible, not a barrel that's going to inflict the most effect on a particular ball. Now, let's look at a couple of common myths and try to debunk them. We'll look at about three here. First myth, aftermarket barrels are inherently more accurate than stock barrels. As we've already seen, it's a tube. No. Uh, in general, and for the most part, aftermarket barrels cannot at all improve the accuracy. Now, in some limited cases, an aftermarket barrel can be less inaccurate 
or less harmful in how it affects the paintball than a stock barrel. That's possible. But, you know, in general, in terms of accuracy, not a significant difference between aftermarket and stock barrels. Now, that's not to say that there aren't some good reasons for getting aftermarket barrels. I run aftermarket barrels in, in many cases, but I never do so with the understanding or the belief that they are somehow granting me additional accuracy. They can't and they don't. Uh, but as we'll see, there are some reasons why you may very well want to pick up an aftermarket barrel. Um, now, second myth is the the notion that the smoother the bore finish, the better. Now, this is something that I bought into for a long time, and it's simply false. You know, uh, again, it kind of makes a, a certain kind of sense that you want something that's really glassy smooth, and, and that will somehow be better. But in doing some research, as well as listening especially to uh, Simon Stevens talk about this, the notion that, you know, the smoother a surface gets to a degree, the more friction it builds up. There's kind of a sweet spot. So more uh, smoothness will actually generate more friction because there's actually more contact area. And in the same way you go the other direction, more roughness to a point, you know, uh, as you build up more roughness, that's adding friction. But there is a sweet spot in the middle where a, a finish that's not maybe very glamorous to look at can actually be very low friction and that's something that maybe we can uh, take a look at later finally there's the myth that longer barrels are better now in the first case you know the idea is that they may increase range or accuracy something like that completely false two inch barrel 22 inch barrel makes no difference 300 fps is 300 fps or 285 or whatever it is that your field has once that ball leaves the barrel, it's going at the velocity it's going at, and, and it does not make one iota of difference how long that barrel was in terms of how far the paintball is going to fly or along what trajectory. It's as fast and it's going to fly as far as accurately as it is going to do, and the barrel has nothing, nothing, nothing to do with it. Now, the second component of barrel length has a little bit more going for it, and that's the idea that it, it at least enables you to point. But even this is dubious. Notice here, got a ruler, 12 inch, and when you've got this thing lined up, you see how it has become foreshortened. You can't really see the length of it. This way, of course, you can. But when you're looking, you're sighting down the barrel, you're not really seeing a meaningful difference. I mean, you really have to start extending out in terms of length to get any kind of meaningful difference. So, yeah, if you maybe add four inches at a time onto barrels, you might start to see some kind of uh, meaningful difference. Or if you're very, very experienced, very, very practiced with one particular marker barrel combination, and then you start making some changes, yeah, you, you may see some difference. But in terms of actually making it more pointable, the, the, the differences are going to be negligible. So if you're moving from, say, a 12 to a 14-inch barrel or a 14 to a 16, you are going to see very little, if any, difference in your ability to, you know, point that marker. Um, now then, uh, let's look you know, so that that's a lot of bad news, frankly. Well, let's look at some good news, maybe, for a change. Now, there are some reasons, very good reasons, why you may want to go with an aftermarket barrel in general. You may simply like the looks. There's nothing in the world wrong with wanting to improve the way that your setup looks. So going with an aftermarket barrel because you... You just like how it looks. That's a completely legitimate reason to get an aftermarket barrel. You may also want to uh, decrease weight. Maybe you want to go with a carbon fiber barrel, get that, that weight down. You're really trying to shave every last ounce of weight off. Uh, that's a perfectly legitimate reason. Maybe you're going for additional efficiency, so you're going to go with a, a, a smaller bore. That's a perfectly legitimate reason. Maybe you want to go for a little more quiet uh, shot, so you're going to go with some more porting, or you know maybe a, a slightly different design. That's again perfectly legitimate. 
maybe you're thinking about uh, inflatable bunker manipulation and so you want a little bit longer barrels so that you can uh, have that additional ability perfectly reasonable motives for for going ahead and doing it you know i run aftermarket barrels for any number of reasons you know there are several that i go with and you know very much love and advocate for simon's inception barrels love those things but i absolutely never operate under the illusion or delusion that they are granting me extra accuracy they can't and they don't but they do impart specific tangible benefits that for me make it worth that additional outlay and cost now that's kind of it in a nutshell in terms of figuring out what barrels are what they do what they don't do and maybe some motives for why it, it might be a good idea to go aftermarket now in future episodes we're going we're going to be going a little deeper and thinking about actual issues of accuracy so we'll be looking at smooth bore versus spin imparting barrels and of course the debate of all debates the the great underbore versus match bore versus overbore debate so very much looking forward to this hope this particular episode has been useful um, come on back next time and as always bring a friend <laughs>